Okay, so Peter is studying psychology at a university and he decided to conduct an experiment about positive emotions and pulse rate because he believes that people's pulse rate changes with mood. Describe how Peter could conduct a laboratory experiment to test whether pulse rate differs when people experience positive and negative emotions. Okay, so right away we have our independent variable is kind of given to us, positive and negative emotions. Okay, so we're going to use that it's already in the question. So our independent variables will be a positive, positive emotions, negative emotions. Um, and it kind of gives us our dependent variable because it says right there to test whether pulse rate differs. Um, so pulse rate is going to be our dependent variable. And remember, we're looking to see um, change in an e independent variable. And we're going to see that through our dependent variable, which is our pulse rate. So we're hoping to see that there is some difference between pulse rate of, of a positive experience or positive emotions versus negative emotions. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is kind of operationalize or define what is a positive emotion and what is a negative emotion. And, um, to do this, I mean, we could, we could define happiness or, but there's so many positive emotions, right? Um, what we could do is before the experiment, we come up with 100, uh, 30 second clips, let's say, or 15 second clips, whatever. Um, and we have a panel of, uh, a hundred random college students and basically their job is to label the scene or label the 15 second video clip as being a happy or positive emotion and or being a negative emotion. They're going to have two choices. Is this a positive um, a emotion or a positive clip? Is this conveying positive emotion? You know what I mean? Or is this a negative emotion? Okay, so we might have clips that are funny, have happiness, are show people playing, show people having a good time. Um, and then we can have ones that um, maybe have anger in them or have fighting or just something that would maybe have negative emotions. And then what we want to do is maybe extract um, 10 positive clips and 10 negative clips from that. Okay. Now, we also have to identify this dependent variable and how are we going to measure it? And a great way is an M is a MR, um, an EEG machine. An EEG can measure brainwave, but it also measures someone's pulse rate. So we saw that demand in Kleitman and we can use that again here. Um, and again, the pulse rate is going to give us a quanti some quantitative data and it's going to be replicable. It's going to be reliable using a machine like that. Using standardized machines or scientific equipment is going to give us more reliability. So how are we going to use our sample? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of cool in the question. It says he's studying psychology at university. So let's do an op let's do an opportunity sample and say Peter's going to just walk through campus and he's going to ask participants if they are available on this very next Saturday to be part of their study. And if they are to sign their name and to show up at, let's just say, the auditorium, since there's already um, a way to display a film or something like that up on a screen, okay? Now, um, since we are going to compare positive and negative emotions, um, well, first of all, we have to, let's, you know, our sampling technique. So we're going to, our population is going to be university students. Our sample, let's just say our sample is 50 college students. We can have, um, an even number or an odd number. Normally, if it's, you know, if it's not random, we might have an odd number. So we could say there's 30 males and 20 females or vice versa, whatever you'd like to put. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a repeated measures design because I'm going to show people positive and negative scenes. And that means they're going to, they're going to be, since our independent variable is positive 
and negative emotions. We could even have a control group where people sat in the auditorium and saw no scenes if we wanted to. Um, but let's, let's not worry about that right now. So what we're going to do, um, we, we, you could have an independence design where half of the people saw a positive and half saw a negative, but I think there might be more uncontrolled variables in that sense. At least we can compare an individual seeing a positive versus seeing a, a negative emotional scene. So we're going to have a repeated measures design. Each person is going to see positive scenes and negative scenes. All right. Now we want to make sure that the scenes are not going to create a bias in any way. So a good way to do that is to um, counterbalance. Right? Let's counterbalance so that each participant sees the scenes in different order. And we're making sure that we're not doing a positive and a negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, that some people might see three positives in a row and then two negatives in a row. Okay, so, so we're going to counterbalance. Um, and any controls that we think might cause an issue... Do you know of any controls that you can think of? Um, anything we could control for to make sure that everyone's experience is the same? Um, they could all be in the same row, the exact same row of the auditorium. So some people aren't seeing it um, further or, or closer than others. We can make sure that um, the volume of the scene is the exact same for everyone. Okay, these are some controls. Um, what if somebody couldn't hear a, a pun or a joke that was in the positive one because the volume was too low, okay? So maybe we can account for something like that. Um, now, all right, so what we're going to do is we are going to play a scene and everyone's going to see each scene, which is counterbalanced for 15 seconds. And what we're gonna do is take their pulse rate for 15 seconds every time we have a clip. So we're gonna change clips. Um, we're gonna have 10 seconds in between each clip so the pulse rate can go back to its normal pulse rate. And then we're gonna show the next clip which is 15 seconds. Then we're going to have 10 seconds of like calmness where there's no clip. And then we're going to show another scene, which is 15 seconds. So these are all controls, but they're all, you know, that everyone saw the scenes for the same amount of time. But it's also part of the standardized procedure. Now we are doing a laboratory experiment. We need to state that even though it's kind of stated, it says conduct a laboratory experiment, you know, just, just kind of throw that in there. Say this is a laboratory experiment. Um, and what we're going to do afterwards is after people are done seeing all of the scenes, um, we're going to debrief them and we're going to tell them what the experiment was about and if they had any issues or um, have any problems with the negative scenes that they saw that we could provide them services if they needed to, right? Because depending on the, the negativity of the scenes or the emotions, technically we could trigger someone, maybe. We don't know people's personal traumas. So that would be individual, you know, individual differences and things like that we have to account for. So we would, we would have to debrief them at the end. Now we're going to take our data, which our data is going to be quantitative data. Um, and we are going to compare the data from the EEG machine to the scenes that they saw one for one. And basically, we're going to get an average. So we're going to add all the positive scene pulses. And then we're going to get a, a mean average. And then we're going to add all the pulses that were from the negative emotions. And we're going to get an average. And then we're going to compare those two means. Okay, so maybe, I don't, I don't know the answer to this, but maybe we see that that negative emotions increase people's pulse rate 
and we have an average of 113 beats per minute for someone's pulse in a negative emotion versus 86 beats per minute in a negative emotion, in a positive emotion. So do we have to provide the results? Like no, you don't have to provide the results. I'm just kind of saying it so that you can see, because you're going to have to, like telling me how you're going to get the results is important. You don't have to tell me the results because that's super hypothetical. You don't know the answer to that. Um, one thing we could have done is create a hypothesis though that we didn't. So what I would do is go back to the beginning and just write hypothesis. And I would write something like, um, since I don't know which is going to create a, a different, I mean, I, I know there's going to be a difference, right? So a difference is going to give me a two tailed hypothesis. Um, and, but this is asking for an experiment and usually two tailed hypotheses have to do with correlations. Um, we could find a correlation. We could say, um, you know, as the, as the images get more positive, our pulse rate goes down. As the images get more negative, our pulse rate goes up. That might be a, you know, if we had a rating scale for the images, then we could prove a correlation, but we don't have that. And it's asking us for an experiment. So I would say something like, um, University students viewing positive scenes will have a lower pulse rate than university students viewing a negative scene. So that's a one-tailed hypothesis. I'm telling you which way it's going to go. I'm saying that um, negative emotions are going to, or I could have said it the other way. I could have said negative emotional scenes are going to create a higher pulse rate than positive emotional scenes. But it is a one, it's one tailed. So that's more linked to experiments than a correlation because you could be asked to create a correlational study, which again is just how you create the hypothesis, really. Okay. Um, so some of the big things for, you know, we have to put what we are studying, how, which is the, you know, um, dependent variable, independent variable, the controls, um, where this is going to be, who the participants are. And we got all that. We put all that in there. 